thank you very much, Stephen, for joining me today. I really appreciate your taking time to be part of our Speaking Truth to Youth project. And I just have a few questions to ask you. The first one is, what event or beliefs in your youth led you to be able to become an, the activist that you are? Well, thank you. It's a pleasure and honor to speak to you. You know, it's very hard to ascertain exactly what it was, but I had my mother in particular cultivated in me a sense of need to be concerned about things beyond me and our family, you know, like what's going on out there in the wider world. And when I was around 11 years old, my mother took me to a protest, a picket line at a local grocery store in North Florida, where I grew up to um, protest the use of, of lettuce from California that was associated with companies that were trying to bust the farm workers union led by Cesar Chavez. I remember it like I felt the sense of solidarity uh, with people in my hometown who turned out as well as with people all the way across the country who were being, you know, having their rights abused, farm workers. And, you know, it was just a powerful experience for me. And I actually liked it. What people often don't understand about this kind of work is that, you know, I find most people who do it, including myself, actually enjoy being activists, enjoy trying to engage the wider world to help improve our society. Um, people are like, wow, you sacrificed so much. Not really. This kind of work has totally enriched my life and made it much more interesting. And I think people need to get away from the notion, particularly young people. If I could leave one message, it's this. You do not need money to be rich. Okay, you can live a rich life by doing things that really make the world better and make you feel better about your work. So I encourage people to get into any kind of work to help make the world a better place. That's a really great message and a great story from your youth. What continues to guide you, give you courage? I mean, we're in a really strange, stressful time right now. Well, I want to say this. Um, if you choose to do the work to make the world a better place, to get into activism of any kind, you are going to meet resistance often from your closest friends, your family, um, institutions, your schools. You know, there's resistance constantly to trying to actually change the paradigm so we can save the planet and create a society that has more equality and more justice in it. I would just say the solidarity that you need to have with others who are like-minded and do this work is critical to your mental state so you can feel empowered to do this work. You can't do it in an isolated way. You've got to do it in collaboration um, you know, with other people all, who are also doing it, even if they're not in your hometown, even if they're halfway across the country or the world, you know, got to be connected, got to create solidarity. And then it really becomes much easier to do the work, much easier to overcome the resistance. And the other message I'd like to leave is when you meet resistance, don't look at it as a problem, look at it as an opportunity. I have found in my career that when I meet resistance, it's like, wait a second, why is this resistance happening? Well, it's happening because we're threatening a structure of power that is hurting people. Let's figure out how we can turn that into an opportunity. You know, in my particular case, I'm a lawyer. I've been attacked by Chevron, a big oil company against whom I help indigenous peoples win a big pollution judgment. And like, they've attacked me so much that I've turned it against them to show that their attacks against me are basically signs of their own desperation. The fact that the oil company is trying to intimidate me and other people into not doing this critically important work. When you meet resistance, have solidarity, and look at it as an opportunity. You've given some advice for youth activists already, but I'm curious if you have thoughts about how to begin to build community around your activism for young people. First of all, understand young people that there are so many communities of activism that are out there. So the first thing one might need to do in, in his or her place or hometown or neighborhood is to go identify those who are already doing the work and try to see what they're doing, see if that's what you want to do, try to hook up with them. Even if you do something different, you're in solidarity because you're all doing work to help save the planet or make your neighborhood a better place or your, you know, something better. So get the solidarity. It's critical. Um, find it. And as you start doing work, you're going to meet people who are going to respond to your leadership and your courage and your commitment. And then they might join in or they might help finance your work or they might just give you an encouraging word 
or they might f find someone else who say, I know that person who can help you. And all of that is about creating a community. Together, we cannot be stopped. When I mean that, like all the people who care about these issues together can actually create the society that we want if we just understand that we have the power to do that and we don't get psyched out by the entrenched interests that try to discourage this kind of work. When I get back to the question of resistance, I promise you, if you start doing this work, you will meet forces that will try to convince you psychologically that you can never be effective, that you can never win. And they try to win by getting people to be so demoralized about the prospects of success that they don't even try. People often quit before they start because psychologically, these powerful interests, including the corporate media, are constantly sending messages to young people that it's useless. Just go make a TikTok or go, you know, go figure out how to make money and be rich and make it fast because, you know, it's easy in American society. And like, you got to reject all that and understand that we're building communities and structures on this side to change the whole paradigm of how we live. And there's a lot of people doing it and we can build that even bigger and stronger. And it's just critically important as you get these signals from the media or even from your own parents, by the way, that happens a lot to young people or your friends, fight through it. Resistance is opportunity, build the community. And you know what? At the end of the day, the solidarity is so heartwarming. It's so satisfying. It makes the work so meaningful. Um, and you know, you will win campaigns. And it's just nothing more satisfying than winning a campaign that helps make our world a better place. I mean, it's the journey of trying to win is in itself a victory because you're building community, you're building solidarity, you feel good about yourself, and you're showing others what an example of real leadership and courage can look like. Thank you so much, Stephen. Best of luck with all that you continue to do. Thanks Thank so, much. so much for the support. It means a lot. I really appreciate it. Thanks.